The parable of this Sunday is the parable of the unjust steward. He was accused of having wasted his master's goods and called to give an account. And he realized he couldn't defend himself because obviously the accusation was true. So he pulled a few tricks with his master's accounting books and basically embezzled money so that he wouldn't have to work after being fired. And the meaning of the parable is that we are all stewards of God. We are all entrusted with God's treasures. And one day all of us are going to have to give an account of how we took care of them. We will all have to give an account of how we used God's graces and blessings and whether we have used them well or squandered them. So, like the unjust steward, what we need to do is to use God's graces as well as we can so that when our own accounting comes, so that we will be rewarded, not punished. If we abuse God's graces, we'll be punished for that, and God will take them away from us and give them to someone else who will use them and will be worthy of them. Our Lord said to the Jews when they rejected his graces, he said, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation yielding the fruits of it. It would be given to the Gentiles who would profit from it. This is something we should take seriously because we all receive graces from God every day. And we correspond with some of them, of course, but a lot of them we ignore and, and we waste. And that's something we should think about today when we hear this, this parable. St. Paul warns us about this. He says, The wrath of God is upon the iniquity of those who detain the truth of God in iniquity. He means that God's wrath is for people who know the truth but who stay in their sins. Now, when we say the wrath of God, what does that mean in practice? Does that mean that God will punish sinners with some terrible disease or, or that they'll lose all their money? No, usually not. Usually, the way God punishes sinners who know the truth and who don't follow it is to abandon them in their sins. And that is the worst and the most terrifying punishment God can give to anyone to stop speaking to them in their hearts and trying to draw them back to himself. Even King David, who was a great saint, was absolutely terrified of receiving this punishment from God. And he prays to God in Psalm 49, O my God, be not silent, and let your sacred voice still echo in the bottom of my soul. And God threatened this exact punishment to the Jews through the ancient prophets. He threatened that he would stop warning them and allow them to remain in their sins and become hardened and become worse and worse till they ended up in hell. It says in Jeremiah, and, and this is the Holy Ghost speaking to the Jews, says, We have taken care of Babylon, and Babylon is not cured. Let us abandon it and have its welfare no longer at heart. And of course, God never abandons us unless we abandon Him first. We have to remember that, that God is full of mercy and kindness towards people that listen to His grace and repent. But when people reject His graces and they choose to stay in their sins, they provoke God to wrath. This also reminds us of the parable of the three servants, that each one of whom received some money from their master to invest. And the first two reinvested the money and made a big profit. And the last one buried his money in a field, and, and he was punished because he wasted what his master had given him. And the same will happen to us too if we waste the graces that God gives us and if we reject them. When someone repeatedly rejects God's graces and God stops warning that soul of its danger, what happens is that that soul goes from bad to worse because it doesn't realize the problem with its situation. Or if it does see the danger that it's in, the soul sometimes will tell itself that it'll repent at some time in the future. And in the meantime, God allows the sinner to be deceived 
by this illusion and, and to become worse and worse until it becomes complacent and it doesn't care at all about the state that it's in until it's too late and it wakes up and finds itself in hell. And that really is a terrifying thought, but we, we do see this both in Scripture and in the teachings of the saints. That when someone is hardened in sin, God takes away the extra powerful graces that they would need to repent and to see what a frightful condition they're in and make them want to get out of it. And since the person doesn't, isn't worried about the evil of their sins anymore, they, they tend to, to love sin more and more and to pile one sin on another until, until they're completely lost. And we shouldn't think that this is something that God only does to people who lead extravagant lives and who commit sin on a, on a grand scale. <coughs> it also happens to people who are lukewarm and who have a spiritual life that is completely idle and who let their spiritual lives disintegrate through neglect. Because those people are also not using the graces that they have. They're they're wasting God's graces, maybe not by rejecting them explicitly, but they're not using them, and, and they're, they're throwing them away. Remember the fig tree that our Lord cursed because it didn't have any fruit. <coughs> From what it says in the gospel, it, it, it sounds like this tree was growing fine and it was, it was perfectly healthy, but our Lord cursed this tree because it was supposed to produce fruit and it didn't. And that was enough to incur our Lord's wrath. And, and think again about that servant that buried the money of his master in the field and he got punished. He still had the money that he had received. He hadn't gone out and, and spent it on, on something useless. But he was still punished because he didn't make it productive. So God do doesn't just expect us to maintain a constant level of merit. He expects us to produce fruit, acts of virtue and, and advancement in holiness and in the spiritual life, and we will be cursed if we don't. But this doesn't mean that God enjoys punishing us or that He is cruel or unreasonable in, in what He expects from us. Not at all. We are God's creatures. We owe God everything, and He created us, and He expects our service and our love. Our Lord has died for us on the cross. And He has even forgiven our own sins over and over again. And He has given us abundant graces to help us avoid our sins. And yet at the same time, He is all perfect. We have to serve God as well as we can. He demands perfection from us. And we are the ones who are at fault if we don't have gratitude to God for what He has given us. I said earlier that if we reject or if we don't use God's graces, He would take them away from us and He would give them to someone else. And this is true. The reason for this is that God doesn't do anything in vain. That's a, a philosophical principle. So if God gives graces to some sinner to help him to repent, and the sinner rejects his grace. Well, did God give that person that grace in vain? No, because what God does when, when one person rejects grace is that he takes it away from him and he gives it to someone else, to someone else who will use it so that that grace is not wasted. And God finds someone who, who will profit from it and will be you, be be moved by inspiration to ask God to forgive him his sins. So we should never say to ourselves that well, God is merciful and, and he has given me so many graces. I know that I do have these bad habits and serious sins that, that I commit, but I'm working on it. I'll get to it eventually. I'm doing my best. I'm sure I can, I'll make it in the end. And if we, if we don't have a sense of urgency about our sins, if we don't consider our, our, our bad habits to be an emergency, which they really are, we're in serious trouble. Because every time we commit a serious sin, or, or any sin at all really, 
we are rejecting God's graces. And if we keep falling into serious sins, even if we repent, that's still a rejection of God's grace. And we don't know how many more graces He's going to give us until He says, well, this person just keeps wasting them. I'm going to find someone else who's going to be a better bet. If we have a habit of sin, that's an emergency. And we have to be afraid. We have to take every possible means we can to get rid of that habit. To eliminate all of the occasions of sin that lead us into it. We have to get down on our knees and ask God to help us not ever to fall into that sin again. So that... We don't enter into the category of people who waste God's graces and incur that terrible punishment of having God be silent to us and leave us at peace in our sins. And even someone who is not habitually committing a lot of mortal sins, they still have to advance in grace. They have to use the graces that they receive. It says in the Apocalypse, Be diligent to retain what you have, and be afraid lest another should take that crown which has been prepared for you. So we can't think that we're in good shape, we don't need to worry, or or we're doing enough, we're fine. Because once we, we start believing that, we stop advancing in holiness, and we begin to squander the the graces of God and maybe eventually even deserve to have them taken away from us. There are many examples of this in history and in scripture of people who lived a virtuous life for many, many years, and in some cases, in one moment fell into serious sin, and that was a turning point in their life. We see, we see this in the life of St. Paul, or I'm sorry, of, of Saul, King Saul. He was... A pious young man, God chose him to be the king of Israel. And he was doing great for a while. And then he fell into several serious sins. And at that point, it's like he became hardened. And he ended up committing one terrible crime after another until he finally committed suicide on the battlefield. And to all appearances, lost his soul. But anyone who is struggling with sin should not be discouraged by this. It happens all the time that people do make good use of the grace of God. And if we see how many sinners are out there wasting God's graces, it means that there is a big supply out there (coughs) available for us that they have rejected. So if we use them and we don't reject them too, then we will advance in virtue. We should think about uh, St. Augustine, St. Paul, St. Mary Magdalene, and many other saints in, in the centuries since their time. All those people who were the greatest sinners and became the greatest saints, all they did was accept the grace of God and, and turn away from their sins and use the graces they received as diligently and as perseveringly as they could. So let us not waste God's graces anymore. Our Lord is waiting for us to come back to Him. Maybe if we're in the state of sin, to come back to His grace. Or if we're in the state of sanctifying grace, He's waiting for us to come back to a state of fervor and zeal and devotion. He is knocking on the door of our hearts right now. So let us resolve to be grateful for God's graces and to use them as well as we can. And in the end, he will give us a crown. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.